Welcome to the O Brother Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. Dwarf coming at you. I got it out. You like, can do the show perfect. by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's the o brother it's the o brother socks <laughs> for those that are listening and not watching you have to tune into this it's, it's pretty sad look what they my, did to my boy yeah they massacred my boy they massacred my boy well, well i'm telling you if you that. so mike is holding up a pair of the 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 o brother socks that he got off the o brother merch shop and they uh they they put Mike on the heel, is what they did, which I think they was put fitting. They the heel on Mike, is what they did. I think it was fitting. You know, as, as a longtime wrestling fan, I can't think of the, anything more appropriate for you. But Don't you so, talk to me like that. How so, could they put that on my face, my beautiful face? Is that like a really bad Macho Man Randy Savage? No, it's just being a heel. No, that's awful. Bad. Okay, he was so, a bad guy. I don't know when it is you're getting this episode, because this is completely... Uh, unplanned. This is a very spontaneous episode. Now, before before you say anything, like you're always no, I, just itching to get in. Let me get everything I, out first. I had nothing to say. I, I got. How long have we been doing this now? Almost two years. Okay. It's for it's, those of you. Like 10. Wow. For those of you not currently following us, make sure that you do it. The easiest way to find all things O Brothers to go out to our official website, which is OHB as in brother podcast.com. That's OHBpodcast.com. You can see my face in this. Yeah. You might want to get the, get the Sharpie out and you can cover that up. So you can get uh, access to all things O Brother out at the website and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you like our videos out there. Don't miss a chance to see the uh, beautiful Oh Brother socks that Mike is is holding up. But we're coming at you today with a review of the movie Eternals, and we, I, you know, I wanted to start off like I, I doing start this off like this. Why is it uh, ever since Minority Report with Tom Cruise? Right, we we get these these you know, the, the acting out of the sort of invisible screens and the things that aren't really there. And there's a character in this film that it just like, he's trying to shape and mold different technologies with his And then there's another just so one goofy, that, so that's goofy. his attack. He right. does this and then. Right. Is that Kumail Nanjiani? His wow. character. Is that right? Wow. Is that well, his character? I don't know if about? you say it that way, but it was his character. Yes. Yeah. That's the actor's name. I know, but I didn't know if you pronounced it correctly or not. I wouldn't even try. Okay. Of the two of us and anybody watching recently, I think they know that I know how to pronounce names. Whereas you, on the other hand, Emily, can we get the counter set? No, the counter is zero. The counter is zero. What's the actor's name? I'm not trying. You can't sucker me. And I just let's said just, I can't say. His let's name. just chuck. Let's just get one there going. No. Let's get ahead no. of the game here. Why? why, why? <laughs> so, okay. So this is uh, Eternals, directed by Chloe Zhao, who, of course, we talked a lot about when we reviewed Nomadland uh, mm -hmm. a ways back. And of course, she won the Oscar for for uh, best director. So only the second female to ever take that prize home. Uh, and so a lot of anticipation for this film, not only for fans of the MCU, but for us, because we had really enjoyed that film, even though the, you know, the, the topic was a little bit of a, a downer, but. And we had talked a lot about looking forward to seeing her next feature, not knowing at the time that it was going to be right. This huge Marvel movie. We didn't yeah. know that. And it seems like it happened pretty quick. I guess she's a big fan of it and sci-fi and fantasy. And uh, so, you know, she, she was itching to do it. Um, so this was released on November 5th, 2021. Um, and it stars, I don't think we have time to, to list. Yeah. It's a lot cast of, of, lot of names. Cast of characters. It stars a lot of people. It stars a lot of people. Yeah. So uh, this is what it's about two hours and 30 some odd minutes. Yeah. 37, 238, I think. Yeah. 238. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a number, you know, you get Angelina Jolie, Salma Hayek, Richard Madden, Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones is in it. Um, Lauren Ridloff, who 
I recognize, and I had to go back and figure out where I rec- recognized her from. It was The Walking Dead. She's the deaf actress in this film. Oh, who plays uh, the character? I think I think you pronounce it Makari. So hopefully oh. the score is one to zero, Mike. Leah but... McHugh. Leah McHugh. Plays I don't know it? what that. I don't know what that is. She plays Sprite. Oh, well, how, how did you go to Sprite? I was talking about Makari. Bing. Because you were you were saying the names of people in the film. Bing. And I added. What one. do you? Because you were like, who's that? Wow, I was looking forward to this episode, and uh, now I'm a huge <laughs> regress uh, here on the other side of the mic. So, yeah, okay. So Lauren Ridloff was um, uh, just somebody that I wanted to, to mention because I thought she was really great in this film. But um, I don't remember she her was from, from she was the in The Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. She was yeah. in like the ninth season. In fact, she missed okay. about she missed. I read about six episodes filming that to, to film this. Eternals. Right. 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 That's like so, the next movie we're going to do with Tom Hanks called Finch is um, that's when he was in Australia. We, th- we think it's the next movie. Yeah, it, it might be Snitch, but uh, in Finch, that's when he was in Australia. Remember, he, he remember he got um, COVID mm-hmm. and it was it was a pretty big story. And yeah, that's that's when that happened. Right. Right. So anything about the production of this film that you want to start off with? Because I can't wait to see how you bring home the synopsis. You of know, this film. I can't I don't think I can even do a synopsis. It's just too gigantic. Yeah. And I don't think I can do it without spoiling stuff. Right. You know, and interestingly enough, you know, there's a there's a uh, trailer with Selma Hayek, who's mm-hmm. one of the characters that right. basically gives a good summary. She's Ajax. The, she plays Ajax. She, right. she gives a summary, but that's not in the movie. Did, did you realize that? I was, I was waiting for her. To, you know, they show her on this porch. That's when this scene happens. This is the biggest trailer that was released. And mm-hmm. it's not in the movie. It was like a, a curveball. Yeah. It, um, well, it, you know, when I talked about this, previously i've I've mentioned it several times now because i saw the trailer quite a while ago now um yeah i know when i went to see shang chi i had seen the the trailer then too and i was just like i I don't know you know there's 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 a lot going on here who are these people there's a ton of characters so i was kind of nervous about it and quite frankly i still felt that way at the end of the film i was like just way too much going on they couldn't quite you know get into anyone's origin story because it's just too many with that many characters. characters in fact what winds up happening is some characters like angelina jolie right everybody mm-hmm. knows her they see her very small part right. in the movie in my opinion so um some people got more time than others but 10 10 characters plus other characters that are major to the story that's right. a lot of people um to to try to introduce at once now we were talking about numbers before we get on air so this this got a i was actually surprised that the budget was 200 million on this which actually sounded kind of low to me yeah to we were guessing you. 250 yeah and it's pulled in uh 280 give or take and but that's, about 118 that's, of right. that is domestic right which it's still on pace to be the lowest performing Marvel movie. The Hulk is currently the lowest at 140. And I'm talking domestic, not international. Right. But um, it was lucky to get two weeks because it'll wind up being the number one movie this week because right. nothing big other than that big red dog Clifford. Oh, right. I think that's that's its only competition. You know, back when that used to mean something, I can't even pay attention to that anymore. The, you know, the number the one number movie, one movie way, yeah, means yeah. nothing, you know. Well, they still use that. it, you know, in ads. Right. right. The number one movie for two weeks straight, The Eternals. Go you, see it now. You know, right when this started, there, there's basically these ce- celestial beings that are part of the storyline. And 
one of them is basically narrating a lot of it in the beginning. It's really, that's the character that's sort of given all the exposition. And I just, you know, I wanted to record that bit and play it on the show because just hearing it and actually the, the opening scroll, right? A There's scroll. Like a scroll. Yeah. And stop, stop, slow it down. Slow right. it down. It, it was so convoluted. Like I right. use that term a lot on the show recently, but it really was like, what is going on? I, you know. I was, I was reading it and it was wow. like, can I hit the pause button? Because yeah. it's not that there's a lot. It's right. just that it's saying a lot. It's saying a lot. It's introducing right. a lot. And mm-hmm. I'm like, wait a second. It's the what? The, they're the who? And then right. they go to where? And this takes place. This is what, about eight months after Endgame, I think is what it says. It's about eight months after the events of Avengers Endgame. Is that what it is? Yeah. I, we know it's after Endgame because they do reference Thanos. Yes. You know, somebody says, why didn't you come? And stop Thanos. Right. And, and the response was, um, well, we can't. We can't interfere with their human. wars or their. Right. Yes. yes. Right. Because ultimately like their, their faults are, are part of what makes them human. I'm like, eh, it doesn't seem like, you know. Right. That's a great rationale, but okay. And, and you know, to give the summary, it's basically about, you know, the world is fine. And then all of a sudden these, um, what do they call them? Not descendants. Deviants. Deviants. Yeah. These deviants come and they're like monsters. You know, there's an opening scene where they attack this family. That's uh, basically fishing on the beach. So these deviants arrive, but they were actually, they were originally sent by the right. celestial beings right which we don't know though protect to pop right to populate correct the, the different planets in the universe or whatever right correct but that <laughs> one we're not told with us, till, folks. yeah we're not told that so halfway yeah. into the movie if you haven't and seen this already so that's why the eternals were created to protect the humans from these deviants that's about as good hey, as you can do, right? That's as I'll take it. <laughs> and and I gotta say, you did I text you or did you text me? I think I text you today mm-hmm. and said, you know, what's up or where are you? Yeah, I, I think and I texted you. Said, you. I text you. Do you. Okay, you texted yeah. me and and I said, where are you? And you said movies, and I or, or you said watching a movie. You didn't yeah. say you were finishing, at the movie. Finishing a movie, I said. Yeah, and I said, right. "Oh, uh, at home." I think mm-hmm. I wrote. And at I home, said, "No." Nope. Yeah. And and I was like, "Where?" And right. then you put like an arrow pointing up because the Cause last thing we had talked about was the Eternals right. last night. Yes. And I said, "Are you at the Eternals?" Yes. And then I shut up. I was like, "He's being one of those annoying people." On his phone. No, it was. I mean, it, 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 we were, you know, separated, so it wasn't. You know, so I was socially could... distanced. No, no, they. Okay. My phone was dark, and so it was. It was discreet. Yeah. Okay. So. Right. Right. I went on a. So, I went on a rampage during the Venom episode about that. Yeah, I'm watching the Patriots game, mm-hmm. and, and I'm just in the middle. Yeah, you know, it's about the third quarter. It was a blowout, so I'm like, I got to rush out like, to the theater. Yeah, you're like. Go see it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll try to get there this week. And you're like, no, we'll do it tonight. I'm like, what? So this is a really. So I honestly, I haven't read anything about the Eternals. Mm -hmm. I just know from the press that it wasn't doing that good. I don't know anything about the characters, nothing about how it fits with the Avengers. So I went to this with a completely blank slate. Right, right. Well, it's funny. I went out this morning to get gas. I was basically on empty, right? And it's where it's where your your gauge pops up and says you've got this many miles left on this. Yeah, tank, right. Right. So you know the panic starts setting in. I'm like, I got about 25 miles. I can I can make it. So I get to this gas station that is it's you know maybe four miles down the road, and as I come upon the gas station it's empty so immediately yeah. i know something's wrong 
Yeah. And I look and I see like yellow tape around all the pumps. <laughs> and it and it dawns Another on 10 me. 10 miles. It dawns on me a couple of days before I had been over in that area and I was going to, and it was packed, packed every pump cars, every which way. Mm. And I'm like, I'll, I'll do this later. So they must, they must be like replacing the pumps or something. And, and people that were there knew this. So they were like filling up on their gas, I guess, not that they couldn't go somewhere else, but right. But now I'm freaking out because now I'm like 15 miles left, you know, right. so I have to go up on the highway right. and drive about another five miles. So th- I lit- just got in there, like short of Fumes. pushing the car to the pump. Yeah. See, but, my car, my car yeah. is too old. I don't have that. Right. So I, and you I just got the needle. To, I drive below E many a time. In well, California. and I don't know if that had zeroed out. But I still have a couple of, you know, how you say, yeah. well, you still got 30 miles. I used to I push know it all what the it time. Is, but yeah, you still got a little. Driving from Florida to, to, to Boston, I would always push that to the limit. Yeah. You know, try to and do I'd, it in one tank. And I'd end up somewhere in Pennsylvania and getting gas. But the reason I mentioned that is because it, it I go past the theater right. on the way to that gas station. And I thought it, that's what stuck in my head. I said, oh, maybe I'll check out Eternals. And it was kind of a last minute thing. So you so, went from the gas station are. right to the movie? No, no, no. I Okay. Because that was a little earlier. And the 11 o'clock show was not sold out, but it was pretty crowded. So I, I waited and went to yeah. the one o'clock show. Yeah. And how crowded was your theater? It wasn't that crowded. I mean, it, there was enough people in there, but they the way they sell the seats still, it's still kind of spread out. So See, they don't do that here. Yeah, they're still doing it here. I mean, and there's chuckleheads right next to me. And, and you can't tell when you're in the theater yeah. who's coming in, picking the seat next to you. Mm-hmm. So I have a problem with that. Well, on this on this site, it tells you that what's unavailable, what's what can't be sold, you know, what's already bought. So, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, they show what's been bought, but like I've said before, because one time I went, I thought there was going to be maybe ten people, mm-hmm. and it wound up being a full theater. So a lot of people, like me, I don't buy them online i'm i'm too cheap to pay the two bucks or whatever it is <laughs> yeah, i just go yeah. and and get the price it's it you know saves me a buck and then i that buck i can put towards my slurpee which is 12 dollars or whatever the hell it is i actually bought some, i see i bought some concessions well, you did yeah i bought i had some popcorn i had some water and uh, broke actually out got the- some I got a little like starter, an appetizer. Yeah. So you cracked the, well, you the savings account. Well, you were there for four days watching Eternals. So it's like you I better know. get comfortable, you know, and I was afraid to like recline the seat because I was going to take a nap. But so here's one thing we've talked about with the MCU, which is actually something we've complimented them about on numerous episodes, which is the use of humor Yeah, in the Marvel movies, right? They know just kind of how to play it in there. And this one, man, did they really try hard? to cram every little bit they could into this thing like too hard in my opinion there was way too much comedy going on here and you you don't think compared to shang chi this was nothing shang chi half of it was you know they should put a mic in 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 her hands because half of it was a stand-up routine well a lot of it was kumail it was his character was just like yeah constantly with the the cracking jokes and it just and then it got and to be sprite was a little sarcastic so you had I didn't, sarcasm i didn't mind that i didn't, mind, that so I didn't mind his some of them were were really funny i'm trying to think of uh, there was one it stuck in my head when i was watching i said that's pretty funny and i wanted to say it to you and now i can't think of what it that, was that he said yeah it was a joke yeah. that he, he said and i i thought his character was really kind of there for for comic relief because he wound up being a movie star and that <clears throat> yeah. you know because the eternals are, are living among humans right in the current day which that's another thing very confusing is this present day past current yeah they they're... kept jumping back and forth right and, and trying to sort of like go through time through like the world's history while yeah. they were doing this as a parallel storyline and correct. so confused. Like at one point that spoiler alert here, 
the Hiroshima scene. Yes. That's which, the one that sticks out the most. Which apparently she had to fight to keep that in, I guess, you know, the controversy or something. I mean, it was de- it's just definitely striking when you see it on right the screen. Right. But um, a couple of pretty significant firsts here, right? You've got, I believe, the first Korean superhero, at least within the MCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, the first gay uh, character. Well, yeah, okay, MCU, Mm because I was thinking we were talking about, um, what was it, Pirates of the Caribbean, where they had the gay character. But this, I think you could say it's the first kiss, on-screen kiss. Um, Yeah. But I thought, yeah, and and, but this one, unlike Pirates, Mm -hmm. I didn't think they were, like, forcing it in there to, like, I'm not sure why in Pirates it made a difference or why they went into the story, you know, with the Mm -hmm. rock and the other guy, this one, I thought, you know, what happens is the Eternals are now on earth present day, and they're going to find each other because there's a threat. Yeah. And so they go to this character and Mm -hmm. his name begins with a B, but I forget what his full name was. Do you remember? I don't remember. Yeah. It was like, Bastios or something like that, mm. but I don't remember his name. Anyway, they go to his house and he's playing football with uh, his young son, and another guy is playing with them. Right, and you question, no, oh, is this a you know a family unit or whatever? And we find out that they are. Yeah, yeah, and, and, they, and, and- but they don't throw it in our face like you must recognize this and mm-hmm. this is a big deal you know yeah it was just a natural part of the story yeah you know and yeah. of the character that was uh, his family and that was most important to him right and and you know i think that was important for chloe zhao too as the director that um you know it, it was embraced in the story, uh, the, just diversity across the board. And ma- matter mm-hmm. of fact, I mentioned Lauren uh, Ridloff mm-hmm. as Makari, I think is the character. And that character in the comics is a white man who can hear. Mm. So totally turning that on its yeah. head as well. Yeah. You know, a, a woman of color um, mm-hmm. who's deaf, you know, so yeah, that's pretty striking, but you know. So let's talk them. about like, you know, what you liked, what you didn't like. Yeah. Well, it sounds it was, like you're kind of more on the negative end. Yeah. I mean, not as negative. I mean, just of the things I'd already said, it's just, there's too much going on. And here's the, here's one of the biggest things for me is I just, I couldn't get invested in any of these characters, but Lauren Ridloff's character, Makari, uh, I, I think it was my favorite character of the whole, it, she was like the female flash. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. It was almost like, hey, here's our the DC equivalent of Superman. They even made a joke about it. Well, yeah, but there's a story behind that because Chloe Zhao was a big fan of Zack Snyder's Man of Steel and the way that he portrayed Superman in that film. So Hmm. there's really no surprise. I think she's kind of paying homage to, to that. Yeah, there's a Superman. Superman, there's a Flash, there's yeah. There's a Benedict Wong Jr. And, and, and they take a couple of uh, jabs at, you know, at uh, DC. And there's even a Star Wars reference in this film. Was Did there? you pick up on that? Yeah. No. Yeah, there was a Star Wars re- reference in it, no. which is kind of funny. One of the characters ho- holding up like a comic book or something. Oh, that's right. A Star, Star Wars. Wars. It was yeah. actually Richard Madden it, who plays Icarus. The, right. Right. Yeah. Now, with. We- I thought he was also in Game of Thrones. Am I wrong there? Kit Harrington is who plays, I know Kit Harrington, but yeah. I thought he was. Oh, too. you know what? I think he might have been. Yeah, was it? Weren't they like brothers mm-hmm. from a different mother? Um, geez, wasn't you know, he I, a Snow? I can't remember if he was a yeah. Snow now. Yeah. I have I to th- look I, that up. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to check. I this, definitely, right. He was, I'm like, I know he's familiar. I'll, I'll try to look it up as we're. And, and as then we're I got a kick out of Kid Harrington. Oh, yeah. Game of Thrones. His, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was right. He, so, yeah. Yeah. He was a, he was a big, he, at one point, he was the leader of the family. I got to see what his character was. Yeah. He's crazy. 
he was um, son to the guy who got killed in the first series. Oh, yeah. Show. Rob Stark. Rob. Yeah. Rob, Rob Stark. Stark. Yeah. That's why he no, was, he was so the head of the fam- family. Yeah, he was yeah. the head of, of yeah. the, the family. After they lopped I said mid- Snow and that's that was John Snow, the bastard. John yeah. Snow, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was funny to see them two together. And, and, and then uh, Gemma. Gemma Chan, and I, I may not be getting her name right, but she plays uh, Cersei, which is, well, we don't don't prematurely with the Bing. Let Emily determine that for us. She's going to check the phonetical spelling Bing. of it. So uh, she plays Cersei, which is a weird, right. there's a Game of Thrones reference right there. Right. And, and <laughs> it, I just thought it was funny when they were together and, and, you know, that Kit Harrington was like, I love you, Cersei. Right. It was, yeah, it was just fun. It was funky. It was a bit odd. And yeah. what is that character's name? Cause that, again, from the comics, Dale, what's Kit Harrington, Dale Whitney or Dale. I, I don't know. Yeah. It shows you how deep. Right. Dense of the comic universe is like, correct. correct. I mean, correct. and we, and how little we know about it. <laughs> right. And, and like with any Marvel movie, there are some post credit scenes. So for those who haven't seen it, stick around because there's a couple of there's a like no a one from the past no one from the past don't give it away up, well don't i'm just saying away. don't say I'm just, anything i'm just saying that they set up more for the future more spoiler alert they introduce more characters is what i'm saying which is we got enough we got enough right now we got yeah, enough avengers yeah. you know who else i i i didn't mind and i'm, I'm usually often critical of was angelina jolie yeah i, I I kind of enjoyed her character. I think between her character and Lauren Ridloff, those are my two favorite characters in the whole thing. Lauren Ridloff, I was there was something about her character. I just thought it was great. I don't know if it was the 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 deaf you know character in it. You know, and again, we have a little bit of of kind of reference to that. You know, with with our mother, but um, it just was striking the character itself, not just her, but like the yeah. character, you know, I, I just I, really, really I thought, striking to me. You know, I can't say there's anyone I didn't like as far as in the cast Salma and Hayek? the characters. Salma Hayek? I, I didn't mind Selma Hayek at okay. all. Um, I mean, I, I'm amazed that she's like ageless. I mean, you know, you would think, you know, same thing. Angeline, two older she's an, women. She's an eternal. Yeah, well, I know, but I mean, in real life, it's not like she had a bunch of makeup on and in, in a costume covering her face. I know. <clears throat> you know it, was a, it was a joke. Is that what it was? Yeah. It's pretty bad when you got to tell me that. Bing. No, for what? A joke? A bad joke? That's you. Bing. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, you know, I thought the directing was good except for the jumps in time, but I don't know if I put that on, on Chloe. Well, yeah, of, you have to, cause she's, uh, she's got a credit as, uh, as, as part as a, as a writer. Okay. Yes. Then I do have to put it on her. Absolutely. Because I thought the writing, the story just, you know, I don't want to use the word convoluted, but that's, you know, that's the only best thing I can do. And yeah. there was so much going on. And, I think I'm looking forward to another viewing. I, I guess it, I guess it's okay too if you. Well, okay. Here's something I don't understand, which is Cersei. Right. She's with Kit Harrington's character, and he works future. at like the National Museum of History. Right. Right. And right. So is she cheating on him in the past or the current day or <laughs> because apparently that makes it acceptable because she's just yeah. like, she's having a, like a major fling with Icarus. Right. And yet we start well, off. She with, was married to Icarus. OK, but, but, you know, make your make your pick. I know. That's, but you know. but I, again, I think that's the story because we're going back and forth in time. Yeah. In the future, she's with Kit Harrington, but in the past, she, they, they even referenced it, right? Kit Harrington said, Well, you were with him for like 5,000 years, you know? Right. You know, there's some things that I think I would get on a second viewing. And also, given that we're so ignorant 
to the comics. Mm -hmm. Here's the biggest thing for me, though. I didn't see any way this fit into the Marvel Universe (laughs) other than them shoehorning it in. Right. I don't now. I'm sure they're going to in the future. Well, right. Cause it follows the events of end game. So at least they're, you know, right. They're starting after the fact. Right. So, so the, so Be- Thor isn't sitting around going, Hey, why aren't the Eternals here? Somebody right. help me out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, they can you help an Avenger that- out. Yeah. Can, <laughs> they got a guy that breathes fire and, and, and I'm stuck here with the sword. Right. You know, um, so I like, did you like they referenced the Avengers? They did. But it which felt it. very contrived. It felt yeah. like, oh, we got to shoehorn that in as well. Exactly. You know, let me crowbar it's, in a couple of comments about Thanos and this and that. It, it right. Just, Didn't one of them even say they knew Thor? I think I so. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. I, that. I think yeah. one of them said, "Yeah, like I met Thor, and you know he's a good guy and whatnot." But I, I mentioned the um, uh, character. Well, what was the character's name? Uh, the Korean uh, actor plays him. Uh, Gil Gil's Gil's Magoo or something. Ching. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to get one for trying to help you oh. out. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely getting it. I think it was like Gilligos. Gilligos. <laughs> That's close. You know? Gargamel. Yeah. <laughs> Gilligan. <laughs> and, and the other one, his part was the skipper. <laughs> and they oh, flew God. around in the, uh, the eternal story. Start Bob Denver. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan Hale Jr. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> We're getting back full circle, folks. Oh, God. But Don Lee played. Look at this. This is terrible here. I'm I know. Crying now. I know. And Don Lee. Like, what are these guys laughing at? Well, Don Lee, uh, I, I wanted to mention him because I had just seen the movie uh, Train to Busan. Have you seen that film? It's like. Uh, I haven't seen it. It's uh, one of these kind of World War Z type films, you know, hmm. Korean film. It's actually pretty good. Um, I'm surprised I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's like a thriller. I wouldn't call it a horror necessarily. Is it a recent? Like a movie? zombie, like a zombie type. Ah, a few years, I think. Yeah, a couple of huh. years. Yeah. I'll have yeah. to check it out. But uh, I recognized him right away. I said, oh my God, yeah, it's the guy from Train to Busan. So I- I'm curious how they shoehorn this into to the overall, you know, Avengers. I hope. I, I thought this too while I was watching it. I hope that they do something with Lauren Ridloff's character. I like that character so much. I'm like, I want to, yeah. I want that character to have a like her own. Sounds like you like Lauren Ridloff a little too much. I, there was just something about her characters I thought was cool. I don't know. And, and, you know, they all, again, the fact that she could like sense vibration and, you mm. know, with, with, because of her hearing loss, I, it was just cool. I don't know. And you know, it's, she did have a relationship going with one of. The, they all kind of got into this uh, Eternals. That's true. Relationship that kid, puzzle. Was Druig. What was that young kid's? Um, yeah. Like, again, too too many There's to name. Just too many. Yeah. But he was and good he, too. He was. Uh, he was the one that could change people's minds. Yeah. And control mm-hmm. minds. And he and, wanted to sort of end it. He's like, yeah, I he can. Snap my fingers and this is over, right? Right. And it's like, no, you can't interfere with the humans, you know, with their wars. And yeah. And, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, the Rotten Tomatoes has the critics at 47% on this. Wow. And the audience is at 80%. So that's, that's respectable on that side of it. But 47, which is what we've been hearing, these mixed reviews. And it's really because of the pacing and just too many characters, too much to try to cram in. You know, yeah, I, and I think that is what hurt my ability to really get invested in any one particular character, other than maybe Lauren Ridloff's character. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, you are know, you, are you checking some stats? I, I no, I, I wanted to check um, IMDb, and okay. the critics meta score is fifty two, mm. and um, the fans are seven. Okay. So that's um, that's about it's, it's about close. the same. It's similar. It's about the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like to me, 
you, we just were just coming off Shang Chi. Mm -hmm. They should have like, there's no reason to put this film now, right? They could have done this film, you know, three films from let Spider-Man come out. Yay. We all know Spider-Man, right? We don't have to be. We don't need no backstory. We don't need to learn his abilities. We don't <laughs> need to learn how he got his abilities. It's a, it's it's a character we know. Show that movie. Give us a break after Shang Chi. Show that movie for all us pop popcorn eaters. Right. And then show the Eternals, or you know, show the Eternals in March or something. Well, uh, clearly, I think wasn't this the, like you referenced in the Bond episode? Isn't didn't it say at the end the Eternals will return or something? Or I, you know, I they will come back. Didn't or something? see that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, because a lot of people were thinking this is going to be a one off, but. Mm -hmm. I don't see how and and I see it as a standalone movie right now. I yeah, don't see wow. it as part of the Avengers. I mean, I have the last five releases, right? Yeah. Behind me. And of course, but I have Black Widow, but we've got Shang which interesting. I think Chloe Zhao was at one point tapped to maybe direct Black Widow. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I you know, I had no problem with their directing, but the story was a little screwy. Yeah. And you know, I didn't like this any less than Shang-Chi. Mm -hmm. So I I kind of look at it in the same way. I I you know, do I recommend it? Well, I I guess um but not real high. I I wouldn't be like run out to the theater. I'd wait for the DVD. Yeah. You know, Spider-Man is going to be the agree. movie that that blows away the box office. But there's a lot of material here they can work with if they want to, you know, carry it on for the next 20 years. I mean, you got endless I, characters. I'm sure they have the Sprite trilogy. <laughs> well, you got a problem with that character because she's only what, 15, I think. Mm -hmm. So she's going to she's going to get older. But they're right. Eternals. They're not supposed to age. Right. Got to take advantage of that. So I don't know if they change actors or what they're going to do with her. But right. um, it's, I'm sure they have these mapped out, you know, like, you know, Hulk, Love and Thunder or whatever it is, probably has a spot written in for one of these Avengers. They're going to bump into each other. and Hey, you can you know, shoot lasers out of your eyes. You want to help us out? I think we got, you know, she. I think we have she Hulk coming. Too, she Hulk's going to be a series. Oh, it's a series. On Disney okay. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. But I've already seen previews on mm -hmm. Disney plus day. Looks pretty good. Actually yeah. for you, you liked. Oh, I loved um, Lou Ferrigno. The yeah, yeah. So and you it. and, and um, who was Bill the Bixby. other guy? Bill Bixby. Yeah. There's references and the she hulk to to them yeah, I'll, even I'll mark ruffalo is got sideburns and dressed yeah. in the 70s garb it's pretty funny. funny yeah um but yeah i this is a standalone movie you don't need to know anything about the uh avengers you don't have to have seen any avengers no, movie no. to go see this you can just go in and see it and but just know like there's a, not. there's a lot going on there's a lot to unpack yeah, even film. if you're not a fan of the Avengers mm -hmm. and you're just going in for the one off, it's like right. it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's you a know, lot. like it's I said, lot. I'll watch it again. No. Yeah. Um, and hopefully maybe see some some, you know, threads I didn't see before. Well, and the know. things that, the things I thought I'd have a problem with are the things that I was I'm still critical of. Other than that, yeah, I didn't yeah. hate it. It, but it just uh, like you, uh, it, yeah. Okay, it could be a one-off, and I'd never see another thing about the Eternals. I'd be fine with right. that. Right, me too. You know, but and I think I told you there was supposed to be twelve Eternals mm -hmm. when the movie, yes. and they cut a couple. Right. So somebody was aware that this is too many characters. Right, and ten and still too many. Yeah, they should have sliced it to like four, maybe. Four? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you think about it, the screen time, love to see the screen time of each eternal. Right. And I bet we'd break it down. You'd see like four got the most. 
mm-hmm. and the other six were like Probably pop so, in yeah. and get killed or pop in and kill someone. So let's uh, let's speed through time here and, and get yeah. to your video picks. Okay, yeah. So we're done with the Eternals. Any last comments you want to make? No, no. This it, right. it lived up to kind of what I expected. Okay, so know? two picks here that um, one for the West Coast, one for first one is Copland mm. with your my, buddy Sly Stallone. Yeah, I love that. Um, That's a good. This one. is this is his best movie, I think, still to date. You think? I I really do. I think given um given the how he had to stretch from who he was who he yeah. was known for i mean if you, there were... you can argue that uh, rocky of course mm-hmm. that made him a star well and and you know me i still argue although there's not a, a lot of dialogue is part of the problem but i still first blood i think he's yeah. underrated in that film yeah that first last blood sequence in one. first blood is is incredible yeah. So Copland, that, that's a great one. It is. Yeah. Those are both, you know, great films. This is one that I think people might have overlooked. Mm-hmm. So if you've overlooked that and you're a Stallone fan, go see it. Yeah, definitely. Now. So I got your guy and then I yeah. figured I'd give one my guy, just Steve Martin. Oh, yeah. L.A. Story. L.A. Yeah. Story. Have you seen this? Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah, okay. Because uh, it's really I, I always I never really got it until I moved to California and mm-hmm. lived in California. And it made a lot more sense to me yeah. after, you know, the way people are, the way people speak, the way they gather. I mean, a lot of it's really, I mean, it really is an LA story. What so. made you recommend that? Um, you know, You've I had wanted that to, for a while. No, I just got it. Oh, okay. Just you just it. got it. It just yeah. came out on, on Blu-ray. That's oh, okay. why. Yeah. So I, yeah. I I haven't even watched it yet. It's, still it's a nice it. cover. I have a digital uh, copy that beautiful maybe give to a friend. Nice. I so, know someone that you that uh, you would consider a close friend. Oh, OK, good. Yeah. Harvey down the street. Yeah. Harvey. Harvey. Yeah, he's going to call Harvey. Harvey. Let's yeah. go get Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are two. Those are two solid ones. Yeah, LA story. I haven't seen in a long time. I, I uh, makes me think of Grand Canyon too. Remember Grand Canyon with yeah with him. Although this is funny, Glover. that was yeah, that was more know, dramatic. That was a serious. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's going to do it for uh, the review of Eternals. So I, I don't know. Uh, we're sort of indifferent almost to this. You know, yeah, but should they see it? Should they not see it? Mm, uh, like you said, a home viewing or, or a DVD rental or something like that. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily rush out to the theater to see it. I mean, it's nice to see it on the big screen just from the visual right. aesthetic standpoint. But other than that, so um, anything else about this one on your end? Same. You know, I, I wish I wanted to like it more. I thought yeah. when I first saw the Selma Hayek. I thought it was going to fit into the Avengers because where were they? That was the big question. And they brought up the question but didn't answer it. Yeah, you need Good to enough to my liking. Right. So, you need to shoot this like in panoramic view just to get everybody on the screen or so many yeah. characters. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we got for this episode of the O Brother Podcast. I've been your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.